So all of us have delayed some task in our life at some point, right? All of us have been lazy, all of us have not done time management, and then we ended up procrastinating in one way or another. All of us have delayed or avoided doing things we don't like doing or calling people we were supposed to call or etc. etc. So it's the human condition. We all procrastinate on something or another, even the most successful people are probably procrastinating somewhere in their home life in some way. So human condition, procrastination. However, not every one of us is a procrastinator. Not every one of us is a chronic procrastinator. Now this group of people is a small group of people that actually suffer from chronic procrastination. They delay in their home life, in their work life, in their school life, their relationships. And that delay actually really holds them back and it can really lead to very low self-esteem, depression, they just feel not worthy, they don't feel good because they can't seem to get through the procrastination hurdle. And there's a lot of people who ask me, okay, Dr. Salia, please tell me how to cope with my procrastination. Well, I can't do that. I can't tell you how to cope with procrastination or manage your procrastination or uh, treat your procrastination until we understand the underlying root cause of that procrastination. So today in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the root causes of procrastination. Um, one, ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, where, you know, it, it, it's a clinical condition, and if you struggle with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, you are going to probably end up procrastinating or, you know, start one project and move to the next, and it can't keep your focus and it can't keep your attention, and so that could be one of the reasons. Anxiety, that's a huge reason why people procrastinate, is a fear, fear of failure, fear of being controlled, uh, fear of actually succeeding. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And then perfectionism, which is very much linked to anxiety, really linked to seeking social approval and validation. And this perfectionism can be weigh so heavy on people. And I know when I was doing my dissertation for my doctoral program, I remember just feeling so anxious and really wanting it done so perfectly and not wanting to fail that it took me like forever to get started. And then I remember I just put the title of the dissertation on there and my name and that was how I got started and bit by bit I chipped away at it. And so anxiety and perfectionism are very much linked to procrastination. So you cannot overcome procrastination until you cope with uh, those issues and no learn how to deal with those issues. Also, oftentimes, um, procrastination, uh, procrastination actually gives us a way out. So for example, if we have a fear of failure or a fear um, of success, we can procrastinate and procrastinate and not turn in that project and not turn in that, you know, the thing that we were supposed to be working on. And then we wait till the very last minute. And then if we get negative feedback on that project, then we end up saying, well, you know what? I actually didn't really spend that much time on it. So it wasn't my best. So it actually can be used as a defense that I don't have enough time. And that defense can be used to protect that sense of self of, uh, well, if I had given it everything I've got and then I failed, then it would have been really bad. So fear of failure is actually a huge hurdle in people actually feeling like they should get started and that they should tend to this. Fear of success is actually a huge one. I had a client who self-sabotaged. Every time she was up for a promotion, she would start procrastinating and then she would show up to meetings late and she would turn in projects late and then it would just be like, well, she's not ready yet. Because if I succeed, then I will get promoted and if I get promoted, then the, my plans for getting married and having children are actually going to get put on hold. And so that was her story. So she was actually quite afraid of success and that's why she procrastinated. So that actually is a real fear for people. And then lastly, this kind of fear of being controlled. Now, if I tell you, hey, listen, I need you to get a project done such and such time, and you say, yeah, sure, no problem, and then the time comes and you don't have that project for me, or you turn in a substandard project because you procrastinated till the very last bit, uh, last minute, and then you turned it in. 
that can actually be quite passive aggressive. And they found tendencies when they did research on procrastinators that they were actually using it as a very passive aggressive way of communicating because they actually didn't want to do that project. They didn't like that job. They didn't like that person. They didn't like that um, you know, particular topic. And they felt like they were being forced into it. And so one way they can be aggressing against that uh, project or that boss is actually just by turning it in light. Like, yep, you're not gonna ask me what I want, so I'm just gonna give you this. And so it's actually a very passive aggressive way of communicating your likes and dislikes. So one of the main reasons people could be procrastinating is because they lack insight as to what their personal goals are. And they're operating off of what society expects from them, what the family expects of them, you know, uh, what uh, the workplace expects of them rather than thinking is this really what I enjoy is this really what I love is this really what I'm good at and so um, first to really tackle procrastination you need to understand the underlying root cause of it so there's a few things I'm going to share with you that work um, and you're gonna have to try whichever one to see whichever one works for you. The first thing is to couple something that you don't like doing with something that you do like doing. For example, meditation is very hard for me. I cannot sit for a very long time. And so when I first started meditation, I did a walking meditation and I actually would walk on the beach and I would feel the sand underneath my feet and I would feel the ocean, I mean the sea actually come and touch my feet and the salt and all of that. So that actually was one way where I was in a meditative state in a me walking meditation and actually walking and uh, doing, cause I like the beach. Uh, but I don't like meditation and I like walking, but I don't like meditation. So I was doing it at a time when I actually was in a space that I actually enjoyed. Another way people can actually, people who don't like exercise can listen to podcasts or watch movies while they're running on the treadmill or walking on the treadmill. Or you can organize your drawers or fold your laundry when you're watching a movie. So couple something you don't like doing with something you do like doing. Another thing would be to give yourself a consequence. There's an app called Stick, S-T-I-C-K-K, -K, and it actually will help you um, put, put some money behind your goals. So for example, I can say, if I don't exercise, then I'm going to um, you know, donate money to uh, this particular uh, ch choice uh, of charity. And so that's one thing. I remember when I was starting to exercise or when I'm trying to really cultivate a habit, I usually have a person that I'm reporting to because the internal locus is not there. So I'm actually saying, I wanna go to a, um, a trainer who will charge me if I don't show up, or I'm gonna meet a friend because I don't wanna let her down or I'm actually going to um, uh, start working in this particular, um, with this particular app, which will actually, I'll have to report the truth to it. And if I don't do it, uh, this one particular habit, then it will donate money to my favorite chatter. So this is one way that I do it. Um, another thing to do is to make sure that your environment is conducive to that. So if you find yourself constantly distracted on technology, turn off the Wi-Fi or don't work on your laptop or keep your uh, fun and games on one cell phone and then keep all of your serious work related stuff on another. So ways you can actually create an environment that is going to not distract you because distraction is actually probably one of the major reasons why most of us do not get what we need to get done. We are distracted on some social media app or another and the next thing you know you're in the vortex and you come out like you know five hours later so you don't want to do that so make an environment that actually is conducive if you are trying to cut down on your calories buy packets that are individually wrapped rather than a box of cookies that you eat at the same time or these small little bowls of ice cream that you can get at the grocery store rather than buying the big one. So small containers so you are managing portion control. That's one way you can create an environment that is conducive to you losing weight. And then lastly, I think break it down into small little bite size. As I mentioned before, when I was writing my dissertation, 
it was really helpful for me just to put a title page on there with my name and my um, you know my dissertation advisors and the title of and then doing one you know one page or one section at a time one chapter at a time one paragraph at a time just break it down into the tiniest little things and then stick a reward to it that i'm going to get this done i'm going to make this many videos or i'm going to write this much content and then i'm going to go out with my friend to celebrate that i did it so add in a uh, break it down into tiny little pieces and then add a reward at the end of it and then repeat so I hope that these tips were helpful and um, let me know which ones work for you once you actually try them. Uh, but I know the ones that work for me are having a consequence and then making sure that I'm doing something that I don't like doing with something that I do like doing.